If you don't remember where I left off last time, I had just finished building the fireplace surround. The next step was to work on putting shiplap on the walls. I was able to get 8 foot long primed shiplap at Home Depot. So I worked around that dimension. The first thing to do was build a frame on the wall. I ripped boards down to the desired width. Because these boards often came with dings and dents on the edges, I was sure to have both sides of the finished pieces be freshly cut edges. The frame had to be even on both sides of the fireplace. The shiplap is 8 feet long, but I wanted to be able to trim the ends of those boards, so I made the gap in between the frame 7 foot 10 inches wide. This would allow me to cut an inch off either side of the long shiplap boards. When the two side pieces were level and mounted, I then worked on the top piece. This had to be as level as possible because the shiplap would be started at the top. I also double checked that the measurement was the same from the top piece to the top of the surround. Putting on the shiplap was actually really simple. I started at the top and worked down because if I did it the other way, there may have been some awkward looking skinny piece at the top. I already marked the studs so I knew where to drive screws. All I had to do was use a clamp as an assistant to hold one side while I attached the other side. There were no studs behind the ends of the shiplap, so I used a nail gun there. When I got to the outlets, I kept track of the precise location and marked it right after mounting the shiplap. I did the same thing with the outlets that will be behind the mantle. I used a box to mark the outlines of the holes, then used a spade and jigsaw to cut them out. It was a bit tricky cutting out the bottom outlets because there wasn't a whole lot of room to maneuver the jigsaw. And unfortunately, the shiplap has weak points because a piece of the shiplap broke off. It wasn't a big deal because I could just glue it back on. And this section will sit mostly behind outlet plates at the back of the inside of the mantle. The coax cable by itself couldn't make the quick turn to connect to the faceplate, so I picked up a right angle adapter. That made it super simple to hook up. I have a bunch of experience wiring up outlets from when I remodeled my kitchen, so wiring up these outlets was no big deal. The only difference was that for the bottom outlet, I had to use a compact box and compact outlet because of the header directly behind it. The wire up in the attic was not connected to the grid yet so there was no chance of getting shocked here. The last thing to work out was the access ports. HDMI and other connecting cables were run into the bottom port and out of the top port to connect consoles to the TV. The top is just the outline of a box that punches into the hole. For the bottom, I used a metal box because it was slightly deeper than the blue plastic box. I marked and cut as much of the top as possible for running wires. This was as much as I wanted to do with the outlets for now. I decided to finish up the shiplap. The mantle will cover that small gap at the top of the surround, so I'm not worried about filling that in. I just notched that first little piece around the overhang. While working down the side, I just tried to make the shiplap as snug as possible to prevent any gaps. All these pieces could be easily attached with a few finished nails. Anything else would have been overkill. Alrighty, 
The shiplap is complete. And all I had to do now was finish the trim. In order to give it some more depth and detail, I doubled up the outermost frame. I made sure that the outer seams matched up as best as possible. Next, I finished the trim at the floor on both sides. I used a scrap piece of shiplap to support the base of the trim. With that done, all the major construction was complete, and I could begin prepping for paint. The shiplap that I got was already primed, but it still had a few rough edges. I took this opportunity to do another sanding pass on everything. I then went through and spackled over all the screws and nail holes. I left a few of the wood cracks on the shiplap unfilled to keep some texture. Okay, with all the speckle dry and sanded, it was time for paint. I laid down all the necessary paper and taped all the edges. And by the way, frog tape, the green tape, is by far the best painting tape I've ever used. This is not an ad, but I will always use frog tape when I need clean, straight paint lines. I also covered the fireplace brick to preserve the paint job there. Painting this thing was easy, just time consuming. It took at least two coats to cover everything. In some cases, like when there were knots in the wood, it took more. I rolled as much as I could, but for all the nooks and crannies and inside corners, I had to brush. I used semi-gloss white paint. One of the things that we wanted to do, but kept procrastinating on, was paint the decorative crown molding in this room. Since I was already painting, it would have been silly to just not get it all done. So I taped up the crown molding and worked my way around the entire room. When that was all done, I could take away all the tape and paper and reveal how it all looked. Inspector Gus had to approve it, or else I had to tear the whole thing down and start over. Okay, now it's time to wire in the electrical outlets. I had already decided where I'd connect it to an unused circuit. Because of all the electrical organizing I did when remodeling the kitchen, knowing where to connect a few new outlets was really easy. The other circuit in this box controls the dishwasher and garbage disposal. I turned both circuits off at the breaker box and double checked to make sure the wires were cold. The red wire here is the hot wire for the new outlets. Both circuits share a white neutral wire and a ground wire. When it was all connected properly, I turned the circuit back on and tested it with a voltage detector as well as with a light at the outlets. Once that was all good to go, I closed it up. I wasn't quite ready to connect the coax cable. That would have to wait until the mantle was in, but I ran the cable to where it would eventually be connected. The outlet cover plates could now be put on. I also tested the fit of the access port plates. They're basically brushes that you run the wires through the bristles. It keeps any critters from behind the wall from climbing through. The last thing I needed to do was reinstall the baseboards and cord around. For the most part, I just had to take the baseboards I removed, trim them down, and pop them back in. The baseboards, the fireplace, and the crown molding were all painted the same color. So clean, so fresh. I must have been doing something sketchy because Inspector Gus was keeping a close eye on my work.
Excuse me. Excuse me. The way that I pulled off this molding was supposed to preserve the molding that stayed on. However, this little section got a small wound. I just decided to pull the whole board off and replace it. It would have been unnecessary to patch up the damage because I had extra boards from the original install. That big hole in the wall is the reason baseboards exist. If not, there would be ugly seams from the floor to the walls everywhere. Last but not least, I installed the quarter round. I cut all the pieces ahead of time and popped them in with brad nails. There were a few really small pieces that had to be glued in instead of nailed. I went through and spackled all the tiny brad nail holes. After a thorough vacuuming, it was done. Man, this looks so much better than the old fireplace. And it's not even done yet. Okay, that's it for now. See ya.